The next speaker is the International Service for Human Rights. You have the floor. Mr. Vice President, Mr. High Commissioner, thank you. The International Service for Human Rights welcomes you to your new position. We agree with you that we must do everything we can to protect and celebrate human rights defenders. You take office at a time when civil society and human rights defenders around the world are facing increasing threats, attacks and reprisals. In Egypt, independent civil society is facing increasing repression and a complete lack of accountability for recent human rights violations. Proposed or recently enacted laws in states such as Bangladesh... Point of, point of order. Point of order. Who is asking for a point of order? Egypt, you have the floor. Uh, we would just like to note that uh, this session is convened under item 2, which is titled Update by the High Commissioner of Human Rights. We haven't witnessed today in the update of the High Commissioner any reference to my country, so I appeal to you to ask the Speaker to strictly abide by the framework of this item. Thank you very much. Yes, this is indeed the case, and I wanted to mention before that this is general debate, so no country should be mentioned, and I ask the Speaker to resume his intervention and phrase it accordingly. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. By way of example, proposed or recently enacted laws in stages A, B, C and D severely curtail the independence, operations and access to funds of NGOs. In other states, national security and counter-terrorism legislation is used and abused to criminalize the work of defenders. As the Secretary General documents in his report, human rights defenders who dare to raise their voice at the UN or even only try to do so are often threatened, attacked and even silenced. We therefore share your reaffirmation that states have both an obligation and a practical interest to create a safe and enabling environment in which civil society in general and human rights defenders in particular can carry out their work free from hindrance, insecurity or fear. In line with your office's priority on widening democratic space, we call on you to take the following critical steps. First, we hope that you will be open and proactive in your engagement with human rights defenders. Secondly, we urge you to push states to develop and implement specific national laws and policies to protect and recognize human rights defenders. In this regard, we acknowledge the positive recent steps taken or being contemplated by Cote d'Ivoire, Mexico, Honduras and Burkina Faso. Third, we look to you to promote and pursue investigations and accountability for attacks on defenders. Mr. Said, you come to your new post with the reputation as one of the world's leading diplomats. In carrying out your mandate, we hope you will build a reputation as the world's leading human rights defender. Thank you.